people and welcome back to food glam life i hope you're doing very well today so i have a lot to talk about okay as you might have seen from the title of this video this is not a makeup or food well it's kind of a food related video but today i thought i would take this opportunity and sort of talk about how i managed to heal my gut now you, some of you might may know what that means and some of you may be like what the heck are you talking about let me start off by saying that i'm not related to the medical field in any way i'm just going to talk about my personal experience and if you feel that you may have something that's similar i would highly suggest that you go do your own research this is stuff that i decided to do after doing a lot of research don't hold me accountable for any um, medical advice because i'm not really giving medical advice here okay i'm just going to talk about my symptoms and what happened and what how i dealt with it some of you might be like what do you mean by healing your gut and um, basically there's something known as a leaky gut syndrome a leaky gut uh, was something that was talked about in naturopathic medicine and it recently became a discussion in allopathic medicine and your gut is basically where your stomach and your small intestine it's just that area and basically it's the top part of your small intestine and a leaky gut is also known as intestinal permeability what that that actually means is in this easiest layperson language that I can tell you basically your um, the top height part of your intestine or where your gut is you start getting little perforations or holes and this is mostly due to our diet our lifestyles etc etc and what happens is that that is a place where you know the waste part of your food that has been processed goes into your small intestine and then goes into your large intestine and then eventually out of your body and those and that uh, usually holds toxins and what's happening is through those holes there are uh, toxins being released into your bloodstream and that basically ends up causing other issues your gut is said to be your second brain when there are issues in your gut it can it can affect your mood it can cause depression even stress anxiety uh, a lot of autoimmune diseases are related to it celiac disease where people are highly allergic to gluten rheumatism arthritis a whole bunch of like bone like fatigue joint pains all of these things apparently are also related to this now with myself i'm going to backtrack to october 2017. actually i'll go further back so a lot of us suffer from acid reflux and acidity and that was just something that i from time to time did suffer from uh, for the past five to seven years but not, it was never really bad it was just like maybe if I had a really heavy meal or if it was too spicy or too oily and if I maybe had a heavy meal and then went directly to bed like that's one of the worst things you could do so I'd have like bloating or it's just really weird like burning sensation and reflux coming up and that's something that would happen and then it would go away you know I'd have like an antacid or something else and it would be fine and I always thought oh because my dad has it and whatever it's probably something that's genetic that's that's not necessarily true. Obviously, my own diet and my own lifestyle has and had a lot to do with that. So I'll be the first to admit that. You know, when I was in Spain, I was walking around a lot. And when I did come back to Pakistan, all of a sudden, like, I stopped all my exercise and I just became very, very stagnant. And the way we do have our lifestyles, even when we do work or we're studying, we're basically in one place sitting behind a desk or on our bed or on a sofa or something for extended periods of time. So we have a very sedentary lifestyle. For the most part if you're very athletic i'm not talking about you and I, you know i was getting very minimal exercise in that way in october i started getting really sick so it started with the reflux coming back i had acidity i had reflux i would have symptoms like irritable bowel i know this might be too much information but i think this will be helpful for some of you guys so you know symptoms similar to irritable bowel syndrome and i wasn't feeling good eventually by november i got to the point where it wasn't even me eating something that was spicy or something that was too oily or whatever that was causing it anything i was eating was making me really sick and just sick in the sense that it was i wasn't vomiting i wasn't having nausea i would just feel like beyond the burning sensation what started happening and which made me think okay something is really off here this is not right you know you, you really have to listen to your body okay i think that god has made us this way where our body actually sends us messages where it's saying you know I, i'm not okay and you need to listen i would eat something and my esophagus literally felt like it would explode I'd have this choking feeling. I felt like I had a lump in my throat. Yeah, I don't know what, it was just really weird. And I was miserable. <laughs> I cannot tell you 
how miserable I was. I mean, I, you know, I'm a big foodie and I was just like, I was like, I don't want to eat because when I eat, I'm going, I'm just going to feel sick. It was making me sleepless. It was, it was really stressing me out. Now that being said, I'm the sort of person who doesn't like to go to the doctor too often. I'll tell other people to go, but I don't like going to them personally. I did get an appointment and one of my biggest problems with doctors especially here is that so i went to this one doctor he was supposed to be a very good doctor but most doctors i feel here they charge you a whole bunch of money but they don't really want to give you much time you know they'll at the maximum they'll give you is five minutes of their undivided attention and the sort of person that i am and i'm extremely curious i want to know exactly what's going on you know i'm an educated patient educated in the sense that i we'll find out. So you tell me something, you just write it down, I'll go and find out on my own. Most doctors don't tell you what it is that is going on with your body. And when they, when I do meet a doctor like that, I'm so appreciative of them. So basically he sat me down and he asked me, are you stressed? Do you have a lot of tension? And I was like, no, I can't think of anything. I couldn't think of anything like that. I was like, no, I'm fine. And then I started thinking when I got home, I was like, do I have problems? Anyways, so he told me to get an ultrasound done for my gallbladder area. I had to get a, <coughs> a couple of blood tests done. Oh yeah, and I got a thyroid test done as well. And I came back and I was fine. All my reports were okay. There was no thyroid issue. Alhamdulillah, there was no like gallbladder issue. Nothing, nothing of the sort. So all he did, he wrote me like three or four medication and he, he's like, just take these and you'll be fine. And I was like, no, this is this is not just about taking antacids and all of these things. So I asked him um, about doing an endoscopy. And he said, well, we could do it, but it would be an elective procedure. I don't think you need it. I thought I had an ulcer. I thought I had a st stomach ulcer because, you know, just where exactly where my stomach is, I just felt like this really weird kind of pain as well. So I was like, there's something I want to get an endoscopy done. So let's let's do this. So now for those of you who don't know what an endoscopy is, it's basically they have a scope like a little a tube with a camera that's attached to the, the front of it and they stick it down your throat and it goes all the way in into your stomach and you know through your esophagus and it goes and sees what the condition of your stomach and your all of that gastric system is it might seem a little scary but honestly it, it was it was nothing to worry about if you do have an endoscopy or whatever they gave me a mild sedative they put me on my side on my left side and um, I was knocked out within I literally a second or two. I woke up, I think, 15 minutes after the procedure was done. And it was just kind of funny. My sister-in-law was there and I was saying like really funny things. If you have an endoscopy, it's really not a big issue. I didn't even feel anything, not even post-procedures. It's a very short procedure. So I took my report. They even give you a nice picture of <laughs> this. Is, I'm sorry, but that's, that, that's the inside of my stomach. I think it's cute. <laughs> so there are a couple of things that I found out. It wasn't anything that was too concerning thank god okay so what happened was that they told me that i have a hiatal hernia and honestly when i went for the follow-up he didn't even really talk about these things like i said i googled everything i went and looked up what a hiatal hernia is another thing was mild antral erythema and apparently that's also called antral gastritis or something so basically i'll put a picture here of what a hiatal hernia is it's basically oh and the third thing he told me was that the my esophagus Phageal sphincter where the esophagus meets with the stomach is kind of loose basically it's like it's like a rubber band so when your food goes through it expands and then once it's gone it's supposed to tighten up again and this was a little loose and that's why the stomach acids were coming back up which was causing the acidity and the choking feeling that i was getting was that every time i guess i would eat uh, the top part of my my stomach was herniating which means basically your your esophagus goes through your diaphragm to connect to the stomach and the, the hole in the diaphragm is really small it's only enough for the esophagus to get through and what the stomach was trying to do was sort of push its way upwards through that hole in the diaphragm and I guess that's what the whole choking thing was. I may be completely wrong but that's what I've been told. And then the antral erythema, basically I had an inflammation in my stomach and that's what was causing that pain. If this gets acute, if it gets worse, it basically is considered an autoimmune disease in itself. And what he did, he had written me three or four medications before, he added two or three more. I had, I literally had six medications. When I went back, I went back with my mother, he was completely convinced that I have anxiety and stress and I said you know honestly I don't but this thing is causing me anxiety and stress but he he literally asked my mother if she was my real mother like he thought maybe she was like my stepmother or something like that and I was having issues I don't know what the heck it was so embarrassing he gave me anacid he gave me a uh, PPI which is proton pump inhibitors which actually have long-term side effects 
gave me H2I blockers and then an antidepressant or anxiety or something like that. And then I was also given a, a antibiotic. Post procedure, they usually prescribe an antibiotic just so that you don't develop an infection and if you already have one to get rid of that as well. Uh, I hate taking antibiotics, but anyway, I had to and I took that for a week. I felt really sick. I felt like I had lead in my stomach. And I decided, I was like, these he had prescribed these to me for almost two months. And they said, if your symptoms don't improve, we might have to continue it and your medication could go up for six months. And I just looked at her face, I was like, six months? Like, that's crazy, I'm not gonna do this. I mean, I didn't say that to her, but I went home and I was like, I cannot do this, I have to find another way. And then a friend of mine had mentioned, when I was telling her all these issues, she's like, I think you have leaky gut syndrome. And I was like, what? What is that? And that's when I started reading up about leaky gut and I learned these things and a lot of my symptoms were very similar and you know the fact that I had this inflammation and I was supposed to take the antibiotics for a week and that's literally how long I took the medicine. I had a whole month's worth of medication and I didn't take it for more than seven, eight days. And I'm sure there are some doctors out there maybe watching this saying, oh, that was a bad idea. You shouldn't have done this. You need to take your medication. With all due respect, I'm sure you know what you're talking about, but it was not a sustainable plan for me. When I started reading about leaky gut, I decided that I'm going to try to fix this myself. So after a week, I stopped all my medication and I looked at some of the foods that can cause this issue. And the interesting part about this is that most people actually have this because a lot of the foods that we eat, a lot of the processed foods, you know, they are triggers for causing these uh, perforations or basically affecting our gut. So that's why I actually wanted to do this video as well. One of the hardest things that I did that I thought that I could not do considering, you know, I'm like ghee shaker and food glam life and literally my best friend in the world, no, not in the world, but in terms of food, was wheat-based products like gluten. You know, I used to hear about people going gluten-free and things like that, and I was like, that's crazy. That's not something that I could ever do. And I legit stopped having gluten. And gluten basically comes from three main sources, which is wheat, barley, and rye. I don't know what rye is in Urdu, but barley is jaw, and uh, wheat is gandum. So, you know, flour, semolina, whole wheat, a whole bunch of these things all are related to that. And basically, we you also have to see what your triggers are. For some people, it could be, you know, I also limited my spice. I already <coughs> I already had very limited intake of red chili pepper, but I reduced that even more. Another one is oil, vegetable oils. I slowly started to move more towards olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, and extra virgin coconut oil. These two, especially coconut oil, is extremely helpful in healing your gut. These are very difficult things to do, especially with the sort of food and cuisine that we eat in Pakistan. For some people, they're trigger is caffeine. For me it's not really because I only have like one cup tea in, in the morning. I don't really need too much caffeine so it wasn't really a trigger for me. For some people it's it's tomatoes or any kind of citric acid, chocolate. All of these things can cause it and in terms of food it, that was really really difficult. I decided that I'm not going to go gluten free completely just because I knew it would be difficult for me but I really 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 cut it down. Like I was the sort of person who would have toast in the morning, roti or bread in the, or sandwich or whatever in the afternoon and again the same thing in the evening like that throughout the day I could have copious amounts of bread and I would be the happiest person ever you know but getting away from that I thought it would be so difficult I thought I would like be depressed about it but honestly when I didn't have it for a week I was like wow at home I, I haven't had chapati for almost two months which is a really big thing I did start having more gluten-free grains and it was really interesting to d discover that like I discovered bajra which is millet. I discovered sorghum which has amazing health benefits also known as jar, besan and like you know being creative and making that work for you and then using like beans and chickpeas and salad instead of the roti or the the bread that I would normally use with whatever meal I'm having. So that was something that actually helped. I started incorporating a lot more fruits and vegetables fresh raw into my just every day what I'm eating. I started juicing it's really really interesting and it's good and it's fun and I was surprised that I would actually enjoy that as well. Like, along with that, there's something known as bone broth, which is supposed to really help in healing your gut. The more recommended one is beef bone broth, but to be honest, I haven't really 
tried that out. It's supposed to be more helpful because it actually has collagen in it, which not only helps heal your gut, but also helps regenerate your skin and hair, etc. Collagen is something that a lot of makeup products have, skincare products, but you can also do organic chicken, organic grass-fed, those kind of things are what are going to help more, obviously. Whereas I was completely stagnant for a good number of months, I started to move around, I started to go on walks and you know, whatever, doing a little bit of exercise to get myself moving around again. And it's extremely important. I mean, I, I still have a long way to go and you know, a lot of improvement to be done in that from what I had become, which was completely like at zero to you know doing something every single day that's what's important and that's you know sort of just getting your heart beat up other than that it was also important to get certain supplements which are natural supplements back into your body so according to dr axe he's a naturopathic doctor and he's one of the leading resources available on the internet you can look him up google it you'll find him very easily you know the four things that he mentions in how to heal your leaky gut one was to remove foods and foods and factors that damage the gut two is to replace with healing foods like i said like clean eating basically three is to repair with specific supplements and four is to rebalance with probiotics so one of the things that we do is when we're eating a whole lot of antibiotics or just everything even our food is injected with antibiotics there are, there's so many toxins going into our bodies into our foods that we don't even think about it so it's not necessarily just the fact that we're eating certain kinds of foods or uh, nutritional decisions it's also just the stuff that's there it's just beyond our control one of the things that anyone whether or not you have issues related to your gut or whatever is to start having probiotics this one that i got is the 50 billion cfu probiotics are easily available over the counter at any pharmacy you don't need a prescription for them this is something that you should definitely include basically because our stomach has both good and bad bacteria and we need more good bacteria in our stomach to keep a healthy flora within it probiotics basically feed the good bacteria and help fight the bad bacteria antibiotics basically kill all the bacteria in your stomach including the good bacteria and if we kill the good bacteria then we just give space for the bad bacteria to take over and control the whole stomach environment i also started taking plant-based digestive enzymes and these are really good as well these also help support gluten digestion and it helps process difficult to digest foods it supports overall digestion and immune system and it helps reduce occasional you know bloating and stuff that you can get post meal so basically if your stomach is not able to do it that well you know it's a really good supplement to sort of help that process another thing that i got and this is really easily available you can find it in i think you can find it anywhere you can even order it online anywhere even in pakistan this is l glutamine this is glutamine powder it's an amino acid you can also get it in pill form but i just think this is easier the one that i got is by the protein works and it's basically something that a lot of athletes take and it's an amino acid that for athletes it helps their you know muscle recovery in terms of leaky gut it's really important because it fights inflammation and it helps heal your gut this is something that I normally take it has a little scoop inside it and uh, to, you know mix it in with water and have it before my breakfast these things in combination everything has really 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 helped me get to the point where I am now where I'm comfortable eating food again and not constantly feeling sick or stressed out or anxious L like I said uh, they say the gut is the second is like the second brain and it's connected to all these other aspects of your body it can cause depression anxiety it can cause skin issues like acne, rosacea, eczema, psoriasis. I was getting a little bit of eczema. It can give you Hashimoto's disease, which is related to the thyroid. It can affect your colon, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, fibromyalgia, headaches, sinus infections, food sensitivities, so all of this stuff. And then there's a whole bunch of other issues that you could be facing that could be related to your gut. I'm going to leave the links down below. And then even if you look it up, there are a whole bunch of different articles and forums and things like that. And you can basically verify a lot of the information you know for me it was such a discovery and i thought that so many people just like myself don't know about this and we should know about this because you know we might just be treating our cells with other sorts of medications that you know believe it or not they do have side effects and for me i would rather go the natural route any given day you know i would rather do that than put other chemicals in my body yes sometimes those are necessary but if all of that can be healed naturally then why not why not do it that way and it actually worked for me you know i found it really really interesting that i would have such little energy throughout the day and i would just be like why what is causing that i'm not doing anything that's so strenuous but i just don't have energy when we're younger there's so much more that your body can withstand
stand and your body is ready to fight a whole bunch of things better but as we grow older we have to be very mindful of what we're doing with our bodies what we're putting inside it what we're eating and you know me being the person who like I said loves toast in the morning to be able to give that up and be okay with that is it's a big thing and you know honestly this is also a reason why i haven't really posted any recipes in the past which is really dumb but you know I, i'll be doing that too my skin has also improved so there's that benefit as well anyway that was my story i hope you enjoyed this story time with me and i hope you learned something from it and maybe it gave you just a little bit of motivation or inspiration to go and do your own research and look deeper within yourself and listen to your body Body and see if any of these things are happening to you there's so many foods that we eat that cause inflammation within us but there are so many healing foods out there as well and if we could just sort of just start putting that into our lives we can avoid a lot of medication thank you guys so much for sticking around for this story time and let me know if you want me to do more like this I mean I don't know if I'm, I don't have like any other issue but you know whatever story time talk through sort of things share your experiences with me let me know if you've heard about this and if you've done any of this or whatever I have to go now but it was really good talking to you if you haven't subscribed already please subscribe right now and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and share it with your friends if you think that it would be helpful for them as well but anyway thank you so much i hope to see you next time take care and bye bye Mwah.